A lawsuit left over from the Jim Crow era in the Deep South. Looks like it has finally come to a conclusion. A federal court is ordering a Mississippi town to fully desegregate its schools. This is the culmination of a 50-year fight against the Justice Department. Black and white students are largely separated in Cleveland. Under the order, the town's two high schools must become one. A school that's finally being integrated after 50 years? Oh, man. Guys, when we first heard this story, we were so pumped up to do this. I mean, this is right, like, in our wheelhouse, right? We even wrote a sketch about it. I get to go to a white school? Thank you, Jesus! <laughs> no, sorry, Mike. Actually, we're not doing that. We're not doing it. Sorry. Yeah, I know. It's sad. It's sad. Uh, because uh, <laughs> something about the way this story was being reported, it just didn't sit right with me. Which brings us to a new segment called, Hang on a minute, news. This don't feel right in my bones. <laughs> <laughs> so it felt like the news reports were saying that this was the case of an all-white school versus an all-black school, and that the town was going to integrate the two into one, right? Like some sort of fantastic racial harmony Voltron. <laughs> but that's not all that's happening here. Let's look at the facts. At Cleveland High School, about half the students are white. Meanwhile, Eastside High School, situated across railroad tracks in a less affluent section of town, is nearly all-black. That's right. The all-black high school is literally on the wrong side of the tracks earning this week's On the Nose Award. I salute you, Eastside High School. But wait, if students already integrated the white school, why is it being covered like this? The Mississippi town of Cleveland to desegregate. Federal court order to integrate. Desegregation plan. Desegregate. Ordering the two schools to integrate. Racial desegregation. Ordered to desegregate. I mean, they're making it sound like George Wallace giving his inaugural address in 63. Segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. <laughs> right? I, that's what it felt like to me, right? So, but the problem is not black students aren't being allowed in the white school. It's because white students aren't going on the other side of the tracks to attend the black school. But Larry, how could that be? Well, over the last 50 years, Eastside High School, the historically black one, has vastly fewer resources. Until recently, Eastside had no ACT test prep, no science textbooks for students to take home, and get this, no lockers. What kind of a school doesn't have lockers? Where are these kids supposed to hang up their tiger beat with Larry Wilmore on the cover? <laughs> right? Where's that supposed to go? And where are they supposed to shove the nerds? <laughs> Which, ironically, is anyone who has a tiger beat with Larry Wilmore on the cover. <laughs> All right, but here's my point. This story is really about the city's failure to take care of the all-black school, not about the half-white school's inability to desegregate. That school is both black and white students. Call it Halle Berry High, if you will. <laughs> Sorry, I just used any excuse to bring up Halle Berry. <laughs> hey, boo. Look. <laughs> I'm just racially mixed. See? It works. So. Look. No one wants to send their kid to an underperforming school, regardless of race. So when these two schools are so close to each other and yet one is so dramatically less equipped, it's no longer about Brown versus the Board of Education. It's about Brown versus a quality education. And that's the real story that needs to be told here. We'll be right back.